Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're here for an interesting feed video. Now, uh, the reason we're doing a live feed video, well, one, we can, two, if people are against it and I just don't care, uh, three, we usually do one for a purpose, though. So as you guys know, we recently had a bunch of baby anacondas. There's still some available. If you contact Manhattan Reptile World, you can have your own baby green anaconda. With that, to get a lot of them started, we needed to start on quail chicks. They're not as easy to start on rodents as a lot of snakes, but quail work really well or baby chicks. So what do we do? We got a bunch of quail. We were feeding them off. However, we had a few quail left over that, uh, well, we don't want to raise quail, guys. So we need to feed those quail off. They're too big for the baby anacondas now. And most of the condas have switched to mice or rats anyway. So here we are. What to do with a couple of quail. So here's what we're going to do. On today's video, we're going to see if a blood python, because a blood python usually eats pretty well, will take a quail. And then we're going to go over to Patreon and see if a gaboon viper will take a quail. I'm interested in that. We are not going to feed quail to ball pythons. I don't recommend doing that. The reason isn't the, the content. If you look at the protein content, it's actually pretty decent. Stop trying to fly. But the reason is... Uh, ball python being a little bit finicky eaters if you've got it eating rats and mice and things like that why would you want to switch it to something and maybe cause yourself a problem so we're not doing that but that's the reason because of their finicky nature but this will be the first thing we're going to feed today and for our youtube video this is our male blood python we got in florida so it's what we picked up for camera guy kurt and it is a matrix blood python, so it's, you know, we'll make uh, ivories, I believe, if we breed the two matrixes together. They did come from different breeders. They are unrelated. This little snake, though, uh, honestly, I got him at the charity auction. On the way home, he, he really wasn't doing really well. So we were trying to warm him up in our hands. He was super sweet. We got him here. I was really, really worried about him. He ended up bouncing back, and he's been doing fine for us. As a matter of fact, he's outgrown his baby tub. This will be his first meal given to him in his new tub. So I'm really excited about that, and I figure he deserves... A special treat you know what here's the other thing these guys are going to look way bigger than they actually are because they have a lot of feathers so okay which one of you wants to be a volunteer Oop. grab one of their birds kurt i don't know what's going to happen we're going to see Hi. Now, usually I would not recommend, oh, never mind, here it goes. Getting between a blood python and its dinner. But the, the curious thing is going to be, does the blood python recognize this as a prey item? I'm seeing a little bit of movement. That's a really good sign. I have not seen a tongue flick yet, which I'd like to see. kind of cute the quill are talking to each other I will admit that's an endearing quality well I don't know if it's gonna work Yep, it worked. Did the camera guy jump? The camera guy did jump. So, uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Usually he's pretty rock steady. So as you can see, the blood python did take the quail. They're usually pretty indiscriminate on prey items. Now, I don't think they're going to get a lot of birds in the wild. If my green tree python was here at home, which it's not, it's in our zoo, this would be an ideal meal for me to give to the green tree because the green tree eats a lot of things that are in the air in nature. Yeah, we feed them a lot of rodents in captivity. But for a green tree, well, it's probably naming quail where it's at. They do eat birds and bats and things that come up into the canopy in the trees where they're at. So anyway, that is done. There's no need to watch the rest of that. Good to go. Uh, and I know somebody's going to comment, like, well, I want to see the whole thing. You know, we may check on it here in a minute and see if it started swallowing. But there's no point in showing the whole death process. The wrap is good. The wrap is solid. The animal, the prey item can't hurt the animal. It's going to eat. It's all I really care about. As a matter of fact, I want to give it a private place to do so where the snake's going to feel more comfortable. Uh, 
obviously if you're a new snake owner, this is not meant to shame you. If you do want to sit and watch that, it's really cool to see how they swallow. It's, I mean, downright fascinating, and I recommend you do watch it a few times. But when you've got 100 plus of these things, you kind of start making sure they're fine, and then you let them do their thing, and you've seen it enough that it, um, I don't want to say it loses its fascination of how they swallow, although you get the same holy crap when they swallow, whether it's a live item or a pre-kill, to be honest. It's just neat to think that something with a head this big can eat something this big. It just blows my mind every time. But you do get kind of used to it, and it's just better let them set and go. All right, Kurt, any questions that you have? No. Come on, Kurt, any questions that you have? Think of one have, question. Have you ever fed a bird to a snake before? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, actually, my first snake was my boa constrictor. And being the frugal guy who was having to eat rum and noodles at least once a week, if not sometimes three times a week, uh, <laughs> I would often... At certain seasons, you can go to a store, like a farm store, like, I don't know, Orsland's, for example. And Orsland's would sell baby chicks and baby ducks. Uh, baby chicks being cheaper than baby ducks and baby chicks being cheaper than rats. I would actually use chicks for my boa. So, yes, I actually have fed a bird to a snake before. Uh, I stopped doing that when I had a chick for a long time and the boa had no interest in it. It wasn't big enough to hurt the boa, but it got rather annoying and it got to go live on a farm became a little girl's pet, and then it actually got picked off by a hawk. So, it didn't go for a well. But yes, I actually have fed birds to snakes before in that instance and that instance only. I think I probably went through three or four chicks at different times. Uh, part of that wasn't just the price with that boa, being it was just a pet and the only one I had. Getting a varied food item I thought would be you know, interesting for the snake, added quality of life. I mean, I kind of looked at it that I wouldn't want to eat cheeseburgers every day. It probably didn't want to eat rats every day. Truth be told, you know, as you gain knowledge uh, and gain experience, it probably didn't give a shit, uh, <laughs> you know. But uh, I thought I was doing the right thing by it and giving it something a little different. All right, any other questions? No. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're going to slide over to Patreon and see if a Gaboon Viper likes to have these.